Well, take a look at this account. It's known as Libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok encourages followers to send abusive messages and accuse these teachers of being groomers and accuse them of child abuse. Any teacher who utters the words, I came out to my students, should be fired on the spot. Since being featured on the page, he's been barraged with harassment and death threats. It just is incredibly frustrating to see that language being used against me and also against trans people in general to dehumanize us. Libs of TikTok was created in April 2021 with a promise to provide your daily dose of cringe. The account began reposting content from TikTok users, mostly people in the LGBTQ community, and would mock them in the captions. But it didn't stop at homophobic and transphobic jokes. Under the shield of anonymity, the account began to dox teachers and has incited numerous instances of violence against community events and even children's hospitals. Libs of TikTok skyrocketed to fame as a prominent voice in right-wing politics. The account currently has 1.7 million followers and has earned praise from Tucker Carlson, podcaster Joe Rogan, Donald Trump Jr., and other fascist chuds. Meet the woman behind Libs of TikTok, secretly fueling the rights outrage machine. The creator of Libs of TikTok was identified by the Washington Post back in April as Chaya Rachik, a real estate agent in Brooklyn, New York. After her identity was revealed, Rachik said that someone from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' team called, offering her a place to stay at the governor's mansion if she didn't feel safe. Notably, DeSantis did not extend the same offer to Florida children who have been kicked out of their parents' homes for being queer or trans. How interesting. Our school system to be about educating kids, not indoctrinating kids. Florida's so-called don't say gay bill is now law. How many parents want their kindergartners to have transgenderism or something injected into classroom instruction. Make America great again. We have rewritten the political map. Rachik has repeatedly expressed concerns over drag performers interacting with children. Back in June, she posted the locations of several all-ages drag shows around the U.S. An hour later, right-wing extremist group The Proud Boys disrupted one of these events, a drag queen story hour for children at the public library in San Lorenzo, California. On the same day, a group of 31 men with ties to the white nationalist hate group Patriot Front were arrested near a Pride event in Kerr Delane, Idaho. They all were wearing a matching uniform of khaki or brown pants, navy shirts, khaki baseball caps, and white balaclavas over their faces. On the back of each hat was a patch that read victory or death. Twitter employees demanded that their company take stronger action against the account, saying that it was only a matter of time before the post led to someone getting killed, according to an internal Slack exchange. But experts within the company replied that the account's tweets did not meet the standard for prohibited threats and harassment. When employees pushed back, an executive asked employees to refrain from discussing if an account should be suspended because the conversation could be leaked. Libs of TikTok has also set its sights on hospitals that offer gender-affirming care, which Rachik has described in her Substack newsletter as mutilating the body. On August 25th, she posted a recording of a call she made to Children's National Hospital. She pretended to have a 16-year-old child who was in need of gender reassignment surgery. The recording was played over a million times on Twitter. As intended, it provoked the righteous anger of the mouth breathers who make up libs of TikTok's core audience. The hospital was inundated with threatening emails and phone calls, and the mouth breathers took to social media, calling for the facility to be bombed and its doctors put through a metal shredder. The hospital's real crime? Providing evidence-based best practices in their care of transgender kids. The number of times that they have performed gender-affirming surgery on a minor? I'll let you guess. Zero. It's zero. Because the age of consent for that procedure is 18. Now, Chaya obviously isn't the only right-wing influencer spewing this kind of hate and misinformation. She's in good company among the likes of Matt Walsh, who earlier in the month called for attacks on Boston Children's Hospital. Children's hospitals around the country are butchering, mutilating, and sterilizing their young patients. But that has to end. We have to stop making it so easy on them. And that's why I'm in the very early stages of trying to organize a national coordinated effort to fight back against this evil. You know, it's really just a matter of where do we begin? Maybe we begin at Boston Children's Hospital. Boston Children's Hospital says its staff is being threatened and harassed now after far-right activists on social media posted misinformation in the case of the children's hospitals, thankfully nobody was hurt. But the hateful rhetoric against the LGBT community had already done significant far-reaching damage. Having faced no consequences for her actions beyond an occasional slap on the wrist in the form of temporary social media suspensions, Rachel continued to post the locations of drag events and far-right groups descended on a drag brunch yet again in October. Then, in November, 
tragedy struck. Breaking news, police say at least five people are dead after a shooting at a Colorado Springs nightclub. Five people were killed and dozens more injured. As I was dancing on the dance floor, I heard shots fired. I did not expect to make it. With bullet fragments in his arm, Isaiah was quiet to stay alive. So I ended up like playing dead for like 20 seconds. Club Q was known as a safe haven for members of the gay community in Colorado Springs. That sense of security now shattered as a memorial for the victims grows outside the club. There's concern that this might motivate others to carry out similar attacks and the LGBTQ community remains a target for violence. The Club Q shooting did not happen in a vacuum. It was a result of the purposefully engineered rhetoric of the right wing. But surely these people actually care about children's lives and are just misguided. After a mass shooting, even the right will wait at least a day before resuming its attacks on the queer community. Surely they have at least that level of humanity. Oh, nope, never mind. With the full unwavering support of the right behind her, Raychick has become more emboldened than ever. On December 27th, she showed her face for the first time on Tucker Carlson's Fox News show, promising to do more in-person events. Though Raychick complained in the interview about being doxxed, if she wanted to remain anonymous, she probably shouldn't have attached her name and the phone number that she used as a real estate agent to the account she used to spread her hatred. That might have helped. But Chaya doesn't really want anonymity, and she explains why. She's going to create a nice little speaking career by visiting groups that want to hear her transphobic rhetoric. I get people asking me, I have mom groups asking me all the time, um, can you come help us? I think that I'll be a lot more effective when I'm not so anonymous anymore. And I'm excited. I already have a couple of speaking engagements planned for the next few months. Good. And, you know, hopefully there will be more, but I want to do all I can and, and help people to fight this agenda. Uh, and I'm glad that you are. I think it's an act of bravery. You heard it here first. Being openly transphobic is an act of bravery in a society that is already transphobic. Within a few hours of her television appearance, Rachik was identified in videos from the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, because of course she was. So what about the social media platforms that in theory are supposed to be holding their users accountable? Joan Donovan, a leading disinformation expert at Harvard University, criticized Twitter's handling of libs of TikTok, saying their approach shows a misunderstanding of how social media influences people's actions. She said, Networked incitement to violence is a snowball effect, where you see people getting more emboldened to participate. Quickly deleting problematic tweets is a common way for spreaders of disinformation to make an impact with a broad online audience, but then incur a lesser penalty from Twitter. Influencers such as Libs of TikTok play a sophisticated cat and mouse game with the social media companies, paying close attention to the company's twists and turns in their terms of service to purposefully dance around the rules. It probably doesn't help that Twitter's owner is a raging transphobe who is estranged from his own transgender child, but whatever, I'm sure that doesn't have any impact on allowing a platform for hate speech. Elon Musk has liked and replied to several posts from libs of TikTok. Raychick has not received any suspensions since Musk took over the company. Although the account has been given multiple temporary suspensions from various platforms, at the time of recording this video, the account is still active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, providing users with their daily dose of transphobia. The one service that has permanently suspended libs of TikTok is TikTok itself, which banned the account back in March. Rachek relies on monetizing her hateful ideology through selling subscriptions on the email newsletter platform Substack and selling merchandise on Shopify. She uses these funds in continuing her work to target children's hospitals and getting them shut down. If you think libs of TikTok is trash, then you'll probably love the sponsor of today's video. Me. Sapphic Dreams is my company. I make soy wax candles that are pretty freaking gay. Every candle is handmade by me here in my little studio apartment in Los Angeles, so you know your purchase goes to directly supporting a queer creator. You guys seriously enable me to pay my rent, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. The link to my shop will be in the description below. Healthcare providers say Raychick's campaign is already having an effect on people's ability to seek healthcare. A lot of people have chosen to try to be as quiet about their practice as they can to avoid those direct attacks. Institutions have removed their websites, taken down their publicly facing phone numbers. It's been very hard for me over the years um, to care for LGBTQ youth and, and engage in, you know, what is really the standard of care, evidence-based treatment, and then to have people throw terms around like pedophile or, or child abuser. And now I see this happening to my colleagues, and it's really heartbreaking. Unsurprisingly, Raychick feels no remorse for anything she's done. In a Substack post, she vowed to continue her campaign against children's hospitals. She said, Getting suspended by Twitter has made me realize my biggest mistake. I only called one hospital. I should have called dozens because I promise you, Children's National is not the only one. 
I promise to learn from my mistake and uncover more of what our big tech overlords don't want us to know. So that's where we're at in this country. People who say things like that have 1.7 million followers who feel empowered to commit violence against minorities. The global tide of fascism has been rising for years now and it shows no signs of stopping. Sí a la familia natural. No a los lobby LGBT. How many more lives will be lost to its advance? Organize in your local community and take care of each other because we're going to need it. I love all of you. Subscribe if you want to see more queer content. I'll catch you guys in the next one.